Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Scale Riders Podcast. This is episode number 146. My guest for this episode is Mark Vargas, a.k.a. Defiant Customs, on Instagram at markv underscore hwhomie. Mark is a 164 diecast customizer, collector, and also model builder. So let's go right ahead and hit up Mark. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Hello, hello. Yo, Mark, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. How's everything? Awesome, dude. Doing well as well. Just chilling out, man. It's uh, it, it's been a while, dude. I haven't seen you from the last time uh, you were over at the at the uh, at the park working on some customs. Yeah, you know, I saw you, and I was like, hey, at least I get to see you before the year's up, right? <laughs> I know, man. Happy 2020 or 2022. Yeah, what the hell? 2022. On... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like taking it back right there. No. <laughs> it's all good. You're going back old school. No, it's all good. So, right. uh, yeah, man. Happy New Year to you too, man. Your family, you know. I hope to see you uh, soon. And uh, yeah, man. It's a pleasure. Yeah, awesome, dude. Yeah, thank you for being on the podcast. Um, you know, there's a lot I want to I want to cover on this episode. Uh, for all the listeners out there, you know, um, you do 164 diecast customizing you also collect them as well and but before all that you also did a lot of model building back in the day as well that we're going to get into oh yeah man it's you had to start from somewhere just something about doing models was kind of a cool thing because you know yeah it, it was it was just something i like to do i had a cousin my favorite cousin uh you know he uh he showed me the ways of modeling and uh, kind of stuck with it. You know, we'd go to the store and he'd buy a model and I'd get a few bucks. I'd buy a model, build them. And, you know, back then it was all about trying to build them and learn. And then, you know, we're kids. My cousin's a lot older than me, obviously, but we just have fun and blow them up with M80s, <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's so, funny. And um, back at that time when you and your cousin were buying all the model stuff, what year was this? Like, or era, would you say? I would have to say era, oof, like 1980. Wow. Yeah, 1980, man. Dang, that's yeah. what that's when you could definitely get away with blowing up model cars like M80s on the street, and nobody would trip. <laughs> oh yeah, we used to we used to go. Well, my cousin lived in Highland Park, or well, Eagle Rock area, so uh, their house was right in the corner, and they had a really big kind of a backyard area, and we used to go over by this little area where it's like. He would dig a trench with like water and it was like his little area where he actually used to like do his little burning stuff up and blowing stuff up. He's the one that taught me and my brother how to do the good things growing up, you know. <laughs> he was that one that would go, Hey, let's go build a model. And on, you know, obviously he would, you know, show us how to do it and put That's it together. Right. Yeah, we would paint a little bit, you know, here and there and then he's like, Okay, cool, we're done. Uh let's go to the backyard. And I'm like, What are we gonna do with this? He goes, watch boom he just blows it up oh you know, man then he, then, he, then he goes oh you know obviously my, my my mom and dad well at the time my dad i'm sorry but my dad uh he was he was he would leave us there to you know they would babysit us my aunt and uncle would babysit me and my brother so we were there for like a whole weekend like two weekends and he picked us up like sunday night but we would have a lot of fun just blowing you know he would just let us light up i my first time I ever lit fireworks when I went was with him, you know, an actual cherry bomb back what we called them. And we blew up, I blew up a model tank because I used to build, he used to build a lot of um, uh, military uh, stuff and cars and stuff. And I got into the military stuff first, you know, I was building tanks and painting them camouflage and we would do little war scenes and just the, the extravagant finale was just to blow them up. <laughs> you know, it was, that's how it went, you know? So that was my, yeah, so he he's always my favorite cousin, and he always showed us how to do things, and that's how I got into modeling, to, just believe it or not, that's how I got into modeling. Dang, the part introduction. Of, part of it, part yeah. of it. <laughs> Dang, and when when you were doing the, the military stuff, when was it when you, like, switched over to cars, and then, you know, you got into lowriders? Oh, man, lowriders, well, I don't know, it's, I, I mean... I got fascinated by like low riders and just cars in general. Um, you know, it, it's like my cousin, you know, obviously he had other brothers and my cousin and then my cousin never really, my cousin Carl, you know, he never really 
had a car. He just was one of those guys that just never had a car. And uh, my cousin Johnny, which was his older brother, he and my other cousin Tommy, you know, and a couple of the my other cousin uh, Johnny and all them, uh, they had cars. So my cousin uh, Johnny, he had a, uh, I, I don't know what year, VW, it was a Volkswagen Beetle. That's all I remember. And it was all lowrider painted out. Like, I mean, it was flaked on top with like all this crazy, like purple and bluish, pinkish uh, flake all over it with, with, with uh, ribbons and stuff. It was all lowrider out and he had a set of Kragers on it. Or maybe I could be wrong, there were rockets. Believe me, I was like 11 at the time. So I really don't remember <laughs> much about the wheels but i remember you know he would hop the he only had the front lifted so he could hop the front and drop the front and you know and that really got me like oh that is super cool like you know you know and then the interior was all like that old school like uh 70s like shag carpet but it was in it was in pink and purple inside like upholstery and he had a chain steering wheel and uh fuzzy dice you know and he had a crank sunroof i remember that and uh, that just blew me away. And then my other cousin had a glass house. He had a, he had a, a I don't know, it was like a 74 or something like that. You know, I only remember it was an Impala glass house. It was like a coffee brown. I'm sitting on some, uh, I think it was either Craigers or Rocket Rims. And the cool thing about it was, you know, they would, when I was staying over there with my brother and all of them, they would call us over and, you know, give us rides to the liquor store and, you know, do things create hopping down the street and i was like whoa this is so cool you know my little brother's on the back flopping around you know but it was really cool to, to be in that situation and just be in that you know in that era and you know once when the cars were dirty they used to tell us to come help and clean them and you know i would learn how to wash the car i was kind of scared that i want to scratch the paint with it and he's like no nah, man just clean it like this and you know do that so i was around the, the lowriders a lot you know then he would take me to like uh uh, Legion Park, and uh, where all the lowriders would hang out, and it would just cruise down the down the little street down there, Legion, with all the lowriders chilling. I remember that like pretty visually, you know. It was, yeah, it was, Damn, it was really that, fun, man. That's really dope because it's like you you got to experience it, you know, not just seeing a car pass by, you got to ride along and you know have that like that's something you'll always remember with your family, you know, with your cousins doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's true, man. Because you know. That's awesome. Back then, you know, yeah, back then it was, you know, we're just kids just driving in his bug. I mean, he would give us rides and, uh, you know, and I remember one incident, you know, incidents, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, my, I think my cousin wanted me to go in the liquor store or something and to get in his car. And my aunt and all of them were like, no, 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 you're not getting in there. Don't go or something like that. I'm not going to be able to go. And, uh, he's like, you know, I guess there were, cause he drive, he used to be kind of a crazy driver. He would drive kind of fast and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, you know, as soon as they left to the supermarket, he's like, come on, let's go, let's go, come on. And he took off, took me off to the liquor store and bought me a candy and stuff. And, you know, I was happy as heck as a little kid. I was like, Ooh, I got a candy and I'm in this crazy hopping car. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. And, uh, so, and when you uh, when you were like getting your models, um, were you just looking for, you know, particularly lowriders, or was it just kind of anything, whatever was available in the store? Yeah, pretty much whatever's available in the store. I mean, like you know, we're talking like the '80s here, so you know, we would I would just look for something that was cool. Like you know, I would look at go to this uh, store. We used to go to this uh, store in uh, in Eagle Rock. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Highland Park. It was called uh, People's back in the days. And it was like a little kind of like a department store slash kind of like a little bit of hobby area. So we would walk with my cousin and he would go, okay, man. And, you know, we just like pick out a car, you know, we just look around and I had a little money my dad gave me and I'm like, okay, what can I afford? Just, oh, you know, oh, this one caught my eye. So I'll build this one, you know? And yeah, I just started you know, obviously we'd build them and I built a car and just blow it up. <laughs> this is eighties right here, you know? So, um, you know, I don't know. It's just fun. It was just fun to do that, you know, just to have fun with them and, you know, just, yeah, I wish I didn't blow them up, but you know, that's what we did as a kids. And, you know, as I got in the teenagers, you know, days in, which in the nineties, you know, that's a whole different ball game there. Did you ever uh, like take a break? 
from building and then when you came back to it was like all right i'm gonna take it serious now yeah after after like you know the 80s you know started going through to the 90s yeah i, I did take a break until like maybe like 90 i would say like i would have to say like maybe like 92 somewhere around there um i i just decided i saw i was in a hobby shop and i saw a uh I saw, I think it was an old uh, Ertl. It was a, a 60, 62 Impala model. And I was like, oh, wow, they make Impala models now? I've never seen them before in my life, right? Maybe I just didn't pay attention, but what that just, just like, boom, it just like got my eyes. And I was like, okay, I need, I want to get this one. And yeah, next thing I took it out and I actually, you know, you got to crawl before you walk and learn. And I try to paint it myself and put it together and yeah, it came out, you know, like it what it was, you know, you got to practice. And I didn't know really know anything about, you know, what I just bought a can of tester paint and sprayed it without gloves on and got my hand and everything and sprayed it and put the motor together and kind of detailed the, you know, I kind of knew what a motor looked like because my dad obviously used to work on his car. So I would see, you know, my cousins too. And I would see the engine block was like sometimes black or red back in the day, they used to get motors and paint them with the red. And so I started trying to copy that and, you know, it, that's where it all began pretty much right there in the, in the modeling world, you know, like actually getting stuck with uh, building kits, you know, that's, yeah, that's how I got started. Yeah. And as far as uh, hobby stores um, at the time, uh, was Pegasus hobbies already around at that time or were you going uh, to other hobby stores? Yeah, I was going, honestly, I mean, I, I didn't really know about Pegasus I, 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 back then, like, in like, because I was still new to the modeling, you know, thing, like, trying to, trying to make them a lot nicer, because I would, I know the Lowrider Bicycle Magazine came out, and that's what actually got me influenced, too, because I would see these guys, you know, building them, and I was like, oh, wow, I, I'd go and buy them, like any other kid would go buy a magazine and flick through them to the model section and go, wow, this is cool, so I just decided, I want to do this. Like, I want to try this, you know? And yeah. So our hobby shops were like, we would go to like save on drugstore. Uh, back in the day, it was, a, it was a store called two guys. Now over here in Southgate, it's called target, you know, but uh, yeah, it was uh, two guys, Zodis. We'd go to these weird stores and pick up models. You know, I didn't know about Pegasus until like the late, you know, late nineties. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And um, when when you were building your models, like, when was it uh, when you like felt comfortable enough to participate, like, in a model car competition to bring your models, or did you just kind of attend it just to kind of get a feel for the vibe? Yeah, I I had a I I I kind of like uh, ran into this one guy that was a model builder. He was actually a model builder, and he was a lot older than me. He lived in Huntington Park at the time and uh, God, you know, sorry, I, I forgot his name, um, but he, he kind of, I, I met him, I met him at a hobby shop, as a matter of fact, like in Huntington Park, I, the store is no longer there, but I went over there because I heard about it. it was a brand new place and, you know, it, it was like a cool hobby shop and it was local to me. So I ended up getting there. I got down there and I ran into this, this gentleman and, you know, we, he just like, he's just started talking and then I showed him, you know, my model I did. And he was kind of like, Oh, well, you know, you can do this and kind of get this down. And he was kind of mentoring me into uh, getting things done. And I'm sorry. And I just remembered his name. His name is James. And uh, I don't know his last name, but he was a really cool dude. And so he started mentoring me and kind of showing me what to do. I'd go home and try it. Of course you fail. And then I would call him and he would go, okay, do this and do that. And so finally I, I ended up doing a 64 Impala, and it was like a purple color. And I don't know. And I just detailed it the best I could. And I showed it to him. And he's like, you know, that's actually not bad. You know, like for you just doing something a little more progressive, it's not bad. So he kind of pumped me up, like, all right, cool. You know, so as anybody else would learn, you know, you, I don't know, it just somehow I got lucky with this gentleman. And he kind of took me under his arm or under his wing. and kind of showed me a little things here and there to do, you know, and kind of made my creativity juices start to flow there at that time. Man, that's dope. I, I feel like that's very important. You know, it, it's, it's a rare thing, but it does happen. Like somebody taking you under their wing, showing you 
giving you confidence to to learn something even if you fail but at least you got like like a backup that you're gonna get some knowledge as to like what went wrong or what to do next and you know just yeah. to pump yep. you up and and it's almost one of those things like um i bet you you're you know we're all paying that forward right now with people sometimes we probably don't even know what, when people are asking us questions you yeah. know regarding building customizing or, or anything like that mm-hmm. um it definitely all, all that information that's being shared is definitely going to help. Yeah, it does. It it does help. I mean, I'm just glad. Like I said, I'm I'm very fortunate that he took me under his wing. And you know, I remember when I went to his house, he was he just had like walls of like shelves just full of like sweet like street rod models and Paula's. Uh, he had chop top lead sleds. I mean, he had he had like a vast amount of like these cars that just kind of made me my eyes just were just like glued like what the like you know if in my mind i'm going well if he can do this one day i hope i can get to this level because this is this is wow like it just blew me away to see these models at his house and yeah he showed me how to how to how to paint like how to how to use the sunlight to paint like this is rattle can you know like how to use rattle can how to do this and you know it was really cool like I, you know how to how to modify wheels and buy other model kits to take other pieces and integrate it into your build. And yeah, it was in how to make things out of toothpaste, uh, toothbrushes, I'm sorry. And, you know, little styrofoam things here and there. Cause back then they didn't have 3d printing. You had to kind of sit there and have someone kind of show you how to do it. And that way you can learn how to do it on your own. And you know what I mean? It, it was really cool like that, but those days were like, I remember those, that, that period was like really awesome to have him. And then, obviously you start running into other people like in the hobby shop and you learn from them. And it's really, it was really cool. Everybody showed me how to do something instead of turn me away. You know, like I would always ask a question and they were more than happy to just to help me out, which was awesome. You know? So, yeah. yeah. That, that time when, um, you know, things weren't available and obviously like not a lot of aftermarket accessories, everything was very limited and, it it was it's one of those things where it's like almost everybody who was involved at the time was like pushing that envelope and being very creative and coming up with new things to share um how, how was that was that a very like challenging time like did it make you did it ever make you like want to quit or did it just inspire you to move forward you know that's a good question cuz honestly it, sometimes you do want to stop and you know take a break and cuz you're you're trying to f- rack your mind i'm like how am i supposed to make this little piece to look like this and you know i was then all of a sudden you know someone gives you an idea going oh this model kit that nobody even wants if you open it up there's a little piece in there and you cut that off and and you sand it down and now you have that little part you're looking for and i'm like what and so next thing you know i'm going to the store buying a whole bunch of these model kits just for that like for instance dayton wire wheels back in the days for models you really couldn't get them how are you going to get you know a Dayton wire wheel this is before Hop and Hydros came out with their Dayton style wheels and what I used to do is go get this I think it was an AMT model it was uh, like a it was an old Corvette model it was like a I don't know what year it was but it was just an old Corvette and they had the wire wheels in them like the 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 it came with either you can use the hubcaps or you can put like these spoked wire wheels so what we used to do and I saw this from a guy who built one and showed it at this hobby shop that, we, that that was in Huntington Park. He had it on display. And I go, where did he get those wheels? He told me it was from this Corvette model kit. And I go, do you have any? He goes, yeah, I got them right here. I bought three or four of them. And there you are. Put them together. You modify them. And now you have like a Dayton lookalike wheel that's close as heck as a Dayton. And then you just get white paint. And we we're just painting a white wall. That's how we started creating the look of a Dayton wire wheel back then. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. really dope. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm always fascinated when I look through those Lloyd or Vasco magazines because that's like the the closest thing that I can get to going back in time, you know, mm-hmm. looking through um, the featured cars and also the cars they would do the, the articles on like the competitions and all yeah. this. And I mean, as much as I can, you know, put and zoom in and put the magazine up to my face. You know, I, I get a kick and out of just looking at all that stuff. And I just know that there's a lot of creativity that goes into that. 
Uh, one of the, you know, recently last year, uh, we went over to the Dedicated Magazine show. That mm-hmm. was that was their first annual show, and you attended it. You were there, and there was a model. You you brought out your models, um, and one of the ones that you brought out that was so cool to see in person was your dually. Oh, <laughs> and man, that that Thanks, thing man. is like you preserved it so well. All the <laughs> details are there, and you know, I also wanted to bring up you know a while back when we had linked up at the park. Uh, you had mentioned the uh, the background story behind like the paint job on that. Ah, uh, the, yeah, the paint job on that one. Well, you know, it, it was crazy. Like that dually, you know, it, it was kind of something that it was like my breakout model for like competitions. You know, like I wanted to do something different. Like I don't know, my mind just said, uh, my 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 creativeness just like you know okay i want to do a dually i've never seen anybody do a dually really like in the lowrider bicycle magazine and i just want something crazy you know so uh i had a friend used to work at nissan and well i picked this uh kit up and you know it was a snap it was a snap tight kit and i popped the hood open and i got another engine from another model started putting it together working thinking really hard what to do and you know, got it pretty much mocked up to the way I wanted it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I want to just, I want to do some wild stuff on this thing. I mean, I want people to see it and go, what the heck is this today at the show? You know, cause I was actually getting that ready for uh, a show. Uh, it, you know, I believe it was when like, it was my first time ever going to like, I think it was a cactus classic. And I got invited from one of the guys at the hobby shop who was going to, you know, he had a little crew and he's like, Hey man, this, we're all going, you know, do you have anything built? And I'm like, I'm doing this dually. So I'm getting this dually done and I'm thinking, what paint do I want to do? You know, I want to do something crazy and just something different. You know, I want to, I want to just make it an eye popper. You know, I didn't really think I would do anything crazy with it. So I had a friend that worked at Nissan and he was, uh, he worked at the body shop and all that. And I, and I was talking to him one day and I go, Hey bro, I'm doing this model. He was kind of tripping out. Like, dang, you doing this stuff? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, like, I'm looking for like a, like a chocolate brown or a brownie. He goes, you know what? I have a, I have a brown that's uh, from a Nissan 300Z, you know, like the 1990s, uh, somewhere around there, they had a, some kind of a brown. It was a factory color. And uh, he goes, I got a little bit left. And I'm like, well, well bro, you know, you can hook me up, whatever. And he goes, yeah, man, I got you. And next thing you know, he hooked it up and, you know, we, I ended up spray painting it with the brown and then, it looked really nice. It's a Nissan 300Z brown, and then I used. Uh, he showed me how to spray the clear because I never. I was. I was met, now. I'm using. You know, this is automotive paint, so I had to use an automotive gun. You know, and and a body shop. You know, he showed me how to spray it, which was really cool. And then he showed. You know, I saw him mixing up some clear. And what are you doing? He goes, Oh, I'm mixing up some clear. And you know, I go, Well, before you do that, I, I got another idea. And he's like, What's that? And I go, Well, I want to do murals on the side of it. And I was like, you know, he's like, we're going to get someone to draw little murals on the side. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I'm going to find out. And, you know, it's funny because it's ironic because I used to go to the Compton Swamp Meet, you know, a lot back in the day. And there used to be a guy out there that did airbrushing, you know, like, uh, you know, he would get a T-shirt. And he'd put like, you know, you know, you know, Ronald loves so-so and airbrush. And it looks all like old school, you know, or like whatever you want. So I had the, for some reason, the idea popped in my mind, like, I'm going to ask him if he can airbrush some cool murals on this, on this model, you know, my, on my, my dually. And so I went home the next uh, couple of days, I went over, hit him up and um, he's like, Hey, you know, and I knew his name and it was Clifford. And, uh, you know, I, I told him, Hey man, uh, I got something crazy. I don't know if you can do this, but I have a, in mind of like, uh, murals on the side and i see that you do murals on your you know on your t-shirts he goes oh man he goes i don't know if i can airbrush or do that small of detail and i go you know it never hurts to try it if you want to try it here's the car and i don't i just want something to look like pirates treasure uh a storm i, I gave him those ideas and about a week two weeks later he calls me and goes hey uh well 
hey, you you got your car, you know, it's ready. And I'm like, oh, cool. So I went down there and I'm thinking, oh man, it's gonna look really nasty. Something's wrong with it. I don't know what's going on. And I get there and I look at it and I'm like blown away, man. I'm like, what? Whoa, dude. I go, you did this. He's like, yeah. I was like, he goes, it was hard to do, but I did it. And I go, I go, are you gonna do any more of these? He goes, uh, not right now, man. It's it's so time tedious, you know. And I was like, okay, cool. Thank you, bro. So I paid him and you know, I was walking like a little kid with a big old smile, like, oh my god, this thing is crazy. <laughs> That's cool. It, like it, like I can't believe, you know, he did this. Uh mural, you saw it, you know, like, mm -hmm. whoa. So I should went back to my homie on Nissan. You know, he did painting on the side. Like it was like a, he had like his garage and he had kind of like a makeshift little spray booth. So he shot the clear there and let it let it chill and you know, I picked it up and from there went, you know, the gold plating on the bottom. Back in the day there was a you know, there was this guy, he was out of state and we used to go to this place. Uh uh we used to send it out to him and uh, we would send out all the parts out and he would chrome and grow and gold everything that you needed. And then like in about a week or two later, you got it back and now you have everything chrome and gold plated. So I found that out from a gentleman at the, the, the hobby shop that I used to go to. And, he, you know, I, I saw a car on display and the whole bottom was gold. And I go, wait, where'd you get that done? And he told me, oh, this guy out in here, just leave it with me and I'll send it. So I had it done and, you know, last but not, you know, so I get it completed and I'm sitting there going, wow, now it needs a speaker box. I need to get something done. So I've been in the car show. This is back in like, you know, the 80s, 86, 85. I was always, I was also in a, uh, I had a, I had an S10 Blazer and a real S10 Blazer and I had it fixed up and I was in a, car, a club called the Exotic Ones. So I was, had a S10 Blazer, you know, doing models like this. And, you know, it was really cool to have a real one besides doing this truck. So I remembered on my blazer, my friend, you know, he works at a plexiglass company out here in um, the city of uh, Torrance. And uh, he made a little visor for my rag top on my car because the original one broke. And I was thinking, whoa, wait, wait a minute. I'm going to ask him if he can do a little plexiglass speaker box in the bed of this bo of this model. Uh, you know, I I'm not afraid to ask. I always like to go and ask. If they say no, it's no. But if he says, hey, maybe I can do it. I'll have him try it. So, yeah, he came back and goes, "Hey, look what I made, man! I made this little box." And I was like, "Whoa!" That and he would cut the holes for the woofers. And after that was all completed, the truck looked crazy. And I was like, "I think I have something here that's going to be hopefully a head turner." That's that was my whole mission for that for that truck. And unfortunately, you know, rest in peace, Clifford. You know, I don't know his last name because back then everybody goes by your first name and you don't ask the last name. But um, he did a few more cars. I think he maybe did like three or four more. And after that, I was, he passed away. So I went one day and I saw his booth closed down and I asked somebody there that was cleaning up. And he said, yeah, he, he passed away, you know, and I was like, whoa, man. So that that mural is like one of his one, maybe out of three artwork. So I was the first one to get that done from him, which wow. is really cool history to that truck so yeah you've seen it and i've had it for so long yeah it's never gonna leave my leave my uh house <laughs> yeah no man yeah rest in peace to clifford man that's cool yeah. that, that he did that for you and, and you know what it, what you said earlier about you know asking that's always a good thing too when you want to you know you you want to do you have this vision and you want to go for it and you want to make it happen on your model but it doesn't hurt to ask yeah that's true man i mean a lot of guys, you know, I, I mean, I have a lot of, you know, as, as you go into this modeling, you know, showing your models off and you meet, once I went to this Cactus Classic, you know, nobody knew who I was. Everybody was looking at me like, who's this guy, you know, and I was there just to have fun and, you know, just absorb it, man. Like I, I, I when I walked into that hall, I saw these, when I was walking to my, to the spot, put my car down, I was just like, wow, this, these, these cars are sweet. Like, I, I was just amazed, you know, and then they didn't know what I had. Nobody knew what I had. And all of a sudden I had a, you know, they're looking at me like people are looking at me like, what's this guy doing? Because I'm setting up a plexiglass display, you know, 
to, to you know, I don't, I don't know if I told you this one, but I lost a lot of my displays that I made, that had made uh, from this company. My friend made me a lot of displays. Um, this one display was probably about, I would say, maybe two feet, two feet square. It was like two feet by two by four. It was a little like kind of a big display, and it had it had like acrylic clear acrylic. It was mirrored. It was mirrored, and it had a, a clear acrylic border, and it had acrylic stand in the middle. So when you put the truck, you can see all the bottom. You know, maybe about a maybe about a four inches high stand display that was in the middle of this display, right? And here's the kicker, because I like I wanted to be different. I I put I went to the uh, pet shop and bought those little rocks you put in the aquariums, and I put it all around the inside of it, but you still see the center of the mirror. I put a little rock there with a little treasure chest, and I filled it up with water. The whole display was in water with a car on top of it. Oh, damn, that's dope. Yeah, everybody was tripping out when I brought the truck out oh. and put it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody everybody was just like, like, I walked away from it because I said, but people saw me and they're like, looking at me like, you know, like, where'd this guy come from? Like, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know anybody. Oh, I mean, you one guy there, and, you know, and. I put that thing and everybody was just like more tripping on the display because it was water filled, mm -hmm. you know, and I had the car on there, the truck, and everybody was like, go look at that dually. What the, like everybody, like a lot of people are tripping and I just did it for fun. I didn't think about anything. I just wanted to be there in the crowd. I just wanted to participate. And next thing you know, it, it you know, it just became it, it it was like a head turn, like a talk of the town in there. And in the, in the I, w I would remember sitting down in the hall or just chilling, and I could hear some guy go, "Hey, did you see that dually over there? Like, did you see that display?" And I'm like sitting there going, "Wow, there are people actually talking about this thing, you know?" So <laughs> that's yeah, so man. that's how it went, man. And and you know, I got a I got a trophy, and, and I walked away with a couple of trophies, which was something I didn't even expect at all. I got like best display, and I got like uh, I took the I think I took a second place in it for the truck for the first time ever. I got a second place. That's cool. That truck. Yeah. It gave me a cool little reflective uh, plaque. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I always hear stories of that, of the, the cactus classic. And mm -hmm. I feel like those were like those times when those events were going on, it was like really big, you know, like mm -hmm. the everybody, even like guests who, I've ha who I have had on, talk about it you know and and it's like you do see some of the photos too that are highlighted in the magazine as well um and, and it's just it looks awesome man like i wish i was there i wish i was able to experience you know the things that you guys were experiencing seeing all the cars and i mean it, it seems dude it just sounds like a lot of fun and especially you know what, what you were doing i'm pretty sure it motivated people to be like you know what not only am I going to build this car, but I also got to work on my display. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, the display thing came because I, I, you know, years before, a few years before that, I went to the LA uh, Coliseum super show for low riders. So I'm thinking, well, if, if I'm going to display a model and it's like at this little magnitude I got here, I need a cool looking display. And I started thinking about, the real lowriders are sitting on mirror turntables and, you know, they got the carpet and they have like the border around with like balloons and, you know, they got it like set up really nice. So I wanted to do something similar to that as a display for the truck. And, you know, that kind of, yeah, it was really, it was really crazy. My friend, uh, his name was Julian. Uh, we used to call him Junebug. You know, he used to uh, work at this uh, plexiglass place and, he would all we would always just sit there i would come in and he'd be like looking at me going okay what's next i know you want to display so we would sit there and brainstorm on like what to do for the next display you know something even more wild you know different and i started noticing when i go to other shows model shows i've been to a lot of shows like not cactus cloud but like other shows around and i started seeing people bringing out bigger displays like different like more not just a piece of glass with a car on there it was more now they're trying to do like electric turntables and, you know, all that mirrored stuff. And I had that done too. And, you know, you have to kind of, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not saying I maybe set it. I may have set the pace for the displays like that with mirrors. I have no idea, but it, it could have 
it could happen that way. I, I don't know. So. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, I'm going to bring up another one, another story. You told me and you had me laughing that one time. You you brought up a story about a model builder who you said was banned from entering competitions. Oh man, I forgot about that. Sorry. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. And I he forgot. had he, he had some. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I I don't want to say the name of it because then I'm going to give it away. But he was doing. Uh, I think it was a mini truck. And um and like he wanted to en- you know he wanted to enter it but they were kind of tripping on oh yeah yeah okay you remember so, now? <laughs> right. yeah so i went so there was this uh there was this uh so so a lot of modeler guys you know they they want to do they, they gotta they try, try to get out well i would say it's it's a pretty much an x-rated version <laughs> model you know and uh now thank you for reminding me about the story now because <laughs> you know that yeah. that was a it's an x-rated one but I'll keep it as uh, less uh, censored as possible, but that's nah, all good, um, dude. Whatever. It's all good. So yeah. So uh, so pretty much, I went. You know, there was this. There was this. Uh, there was this model competition in the city of Compton, and uh, it, it, the the hobby shop used to be in the Compton swap meet, and they moved, and you know they had they had this uh, model show, and you know everybody had their models out and they had the, this was when everybody was all into like a little hopping models, making them bed, you know, dance and all that. And uh, so I had my models out there and, and this one guy came out of nowhere and had this mini truck. It was pink. Okay. He had like a, like a hot pink and he had, <laughs> he had the interior done and, you know, it looked pretty, it looked pretty cool. He had the back in the day, uh, those, those Dayton wire wheels, that uh, actual manufacturers start coming out with them. Uh, you got to put them together. I think they're made by Kyosho or uh, somebody. They were Japanese. They were that little white box, and you put them together, and they look like Dayton wire wheels. Like they look like deep Dayton's, like 15 by 8 or something. And um, I remember those. They started coming out in chrome and gold. So anyways, he had a set of gold ones, and he had a mural on it, okay? So this this <laughs> – he puts it down and puts a display and he, he's like, yeah, my, my truck is crazy. And everybody just started looking at it like, what the heck? His car, his truck, I'm sorry, said he, it, the name of the car, the truck was called pink in the middle. <laughs> okay. And on top of the bed, on top of the, on top of the, the snug top part, the snug top was an actual painting of a clitoris. And it said pink in the middle. Okay. So mind you, he has it on display and there's little kids and stuff here at these shows, you know, and they're, they're, they're right there looking and they're like, kind of looking like, what is that? And the parents are like, oh no, 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 no. Let me look. So the, so the, so the judges, they, they told him either, you know, you can't have this, you can't have this you know, or we're going to have to disqualify it. You just can't even have this on the table, period, you know, because it said pink in the middle in the back window, and, you know, the, the the hood had a mural, the top had a big old mural of the clitoris, and he was, like, defiant about it, like, nah, man, it's a, it's a, it's a custom. It's a mini truck. It's, this is what, you know, and they were like, no, 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 no. So they, they, t- they actually told him you got to take it off, and after that, they banned him. They, every show that he tried to go take it to, they're, they're, as soon as that, you know, you're going to see something that says pink in the middle. Every modeler is knows what's going on with this guy. And every time he shows up, he tries to bring his truck and people are like, no, man, he can't have it. So he got, he been, he was banned. I think he couldn't even, he couldn't enter his truck at any show. He was banned. As soon as he walked in, the promoters would walk him go, do you have that truck? And he's like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but you can't, you, you can't bring that in here. Like he couldn't even bring it in to the, to the show. That's crazy. I wonder. Yeah. I wonder if that dude preserved that. <laughs> you know, I think about that too, and uh, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, even even uh, you know, it, it people were just like tripping out. Everybody, I seen I seen him on a, a show in San Diego. I went to, and he walked in, and the promoter walked up, say, hey, "Man, if you got that truck here, you can't you can't enter. You you cannot enter that truck at all. Period." And he was like, "Whoa." You know, yeah, he started complaining. I'm like, well, why? You know, in my mind, I'm thinking, why would you build something like that? 
knowing that there's kids around and parents and you want to be a tasteful, not some kind of X-rated, you know, uh, truck. That's crazy. You know? Yeah, just, it's like shock value at that point. Exactly. And it was funny because his name, that name of that truck got so like kind of famous in the little modeling world. Now you can even hear people like going, hey, have, you heard of, have you heard of this truck called Pink in the Middle? You know, I've never really, I've never seen it, but I've I've heard about it. It has a clip glitters on the top of the it be rolled on the on the car when everybody's like yeah it's 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 a true build That's i've seen crazy. it and and people are like wow i wish i could see that you know and i'm thinking okay either you want to see it as just as a wow or you want to see it as like you know a different way <laughs> you know <laughs> no, so yeah, they, me, probably, they probably didn't believe it they wanted to see it you know yeah i mean i and That's I wish crazy. I had my old Nokia phone back in the day. I had actual photos of it, and I lost that phone. But I, I, I can vividly remember him bringing it out to a show, and everybody was like, "What?" Yeah, I mean, even I mean, kids were just staring at it like, "What is? <laughs> what crazy. is that?" Yeah, yeah, like they they didn't get the concept of it, but the parents sure did. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. You oh, know that's yeah. what yeah that's what made him and. And then always, and and also too, a lot of people, the modeler guys, started looking upon him as like a bad guy, you know, like mm. like oh, here comes that pervert dude. Oh you know, yeah, like, I can oh, see yeah, that now. Pervert, yeah, yeah. Dang. What's what's he gonna build next? A, a, another car with like some breasts on it, you know? Mm. Like they were doing, they were saying things like that, and I was like, you know, I don't know. I guess it's his taste. Maybe he just wanted to do it as for fun, like a funny thing. Yeah. But I think he did it for to be a funny thing. But he went a little too overboard with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Probably, so that's probably you know. listening to a lot of Sir Mix a lot while building it. <laughs> that or two live crew. Two live that crew. That or two live crew or some. Because he Dang. was he was yeah, he was a cool dude too, but he, you could tell he was a little out there and he smoked a lot of weed outside. But I mean, it was yeah. When him bringing that thing, he just made him I I'm I wonder to this day, you know, he's probably about my age. I wonder if someone sees him and goes, Hey man. You're the one that built that pink in the middle truck, huh? You know, I wonder if it's still stuck with him, like a nickname. You know, Man. you know what I mean? Yeah, that so, would suck for sure. <laughs> but you know, it was it was really cool to go to these shows, man, because you see a different variety of people building different things, and that what's got me influenced in, you know, seeing these model builders. But when I started going to the Cactus Classic and stuff like that, like I would say the second, third, fourth time I started going. I started running into like, you know, Armando Flores, you know, all, all these top builder guys, Gary Seeds, like all these guys are just like, you know, kind of, I knew who they were. They really didn't talk to me. I guess I wasn't in that level yet, but I would always be kind of influenced by like Armando Flores' builds. Like when he did Loco 64 and all that, I'm like sitting there going, man, I want to do something like that one day, man, you know, but then I found out he started doing a lot of metal stuff and he was doing a lot of cool, cool designs with metal, like metal wheels. And I was like, you know, I tried to ask him one time and I was still like kind of a, someone who didn't really know me. And I went up to him and I was like, oh, giddy, like he was a rock star. And I was like, Hey, where did you get those parts? And he kind of looked at me and goes, Oh, I made them. And that's, that's all he said. (laughs) And I just turned around and said, okay, thank you. You know? And yeah, he was killing it, man. Him and a couple of the guys. And after a while, I guess they started, you know, they see me going to the shows and they see me obviously now they started to see me kind of placing in my divisions with models. And now that, you know, as I started placing first and other things, now they're like, you know, Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And they're going to be cool with me now. You know, they're, we started talking, you know, That's and yeah. Uh, yeah, he would see my bills and he would go, man, how did you, he started noticing, like I would create things to make, things work and make it like like the, my flocking you know you'd be like hey who did your flocking i go i did he goes man he goes that flocking is really freaking smooth like he liked it he goes your flocking is on point and i'm like you know i didn't even have anybody teach me how to do that i just saw i just saw a lowrider bicycle magazine and how to flock stuff and i just read it and that's what i did that's, <laughs> that's cool that's, that's how I learned. A, a lot of those uh, those tips they would give. Um, did you follow a lot of them when you had the magazines? You know, yeah, a, a lot of that, and a lot from my from the my gen- my friend who uh, James who showed me he used to do flocking too, and he kind of showed me at first. I was using Elmer's glue because on the magazine I think he used a little glue. I think it said do some glue or something. But uh, I was wondering, I was like, wait, what, 
when you do the flocking, it's, it comes out all clumpy and weird. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, you don't use that. You use model paint. He goes, if you're using red, you use red. If you're using red flocking, use red paint. If you're using black flocking, black model paint. He goes, paint it on there a little bit, like a little wet, sprinkle it, tap it. You know, and he showed me exactly that. And I was like, you know, practice makes perfect, obviously. So I just started sitting there practicing. And I was like, man, I want to put some, like, look like mirrors inside the door panels with the flocking. So I would go to AutoZone. I'm a, back then it was called Track Auto. So I'd go to Track Auto and buy chrome pinstriping tape, the real thin one. And I would sit there at home and cut little squares out of it. And then I would glue them in to look like diamonds. And then I would put the flocking around it. That's, cool. that's how I made, that's how I make mirrored interior with mirror and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Damn. <laughs> so yeah, it's a it, trip. It, like all those little, yeah. all those little things that came together. Yeah. yeah you had a, from the nineties, like from the eight, from, I, I did all the modeling mostly from like all nineties period to like two, like two, 2000, I think. I, no, I would say like 1990. I was like 95, 96. That's when I stopped. 97 is when I really stopped and uh, just took a big break. And that was it. I never really got back into Molly no more. But, you know, I'm glad. To, I know you saw all the cars I've done, like, you know, my 67. Yeah, there, there's you know, one I want to bring mm -hmm. up um, that I wrote down is that green, the Suburban. Oh, the, the Tahoe. Yeah, yeah. The Tahoe, the one you had, uh, David Anthony Garcia pinstripe. Yep. And that was another thing I was scared to ask him because I, okay, this is uh, around that era. I finally found out about Pegasus hobbies. Cause I, I didn't really drive too much cause I did have my blazer and I was in a club and all that, but I didn't have a license. It got suspended. So I couldn't go nowhere <laughs> really drive. So I went with a buddy of my friends. Okay, bro, there's this, uh, there's this, uh, this place called Pegasus. And it's like, and I saw it in low rider bicycle magazine. He did a, like an issue on it. Uh, a, a Pegasus, and I was like, man, I want to go here. I I totally want to go here. You know, you can see the. I think it was one of the workers is in like taking a photo in the back of them is like a whole bunch of model kits and stuff. And I was like, oh man, I gotta go. So I get there. I ended up getting there one day. I got there, and you know, me and my buddy were just amazed of how big this place was. And we're like, walls of model, walls of flocking, walls of. They had like, like freaking shelves of just like anything you needed of modeling resin i thought that's the first time i ever found out about resin bodies and stuff so I, you know i'm in there and all of a sudden who pops out of nowhere david anthony garcia is in there and i'm like wait a minute oh hey you're the guy oh hey what's up i tried to talk to you at the show you know and he's like well you know you know we'll just start chatting and you know he was david was also a guy that i would try to ask him a question at a show and he would just like look at me and go, yeah this is all we do and you know he was like that you know but when i got to the hobby shop you know, he was really cool. You know, we started talking. I told him, hey, I've seen you. And I did. He goes, oh, you're the one with that truck. And I go, yeah. That. So he's, he kind of remembered me by the, the dually. And I go, oh, man, you know about that? He goes, yeah, I saw it. It was pretty cool. You know, I didn't want to, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, it's a pretty nice build. And I was like, thanks, bro. Kind of got me all starstruck and stuff. And so, um, you know, I started going up Pegasus after a while. He got my license back and I was going over there pretty much. Every time I needed flocking, they had every single color of the rainbow there. So that's where I would go. And um, so one day I was building a snap together Tahoe and I painted it the green, that emerald green or the jade green. And, you know, I, I had the metal wheels. I bought those metal wheels uh, uh, at Pegasus, actually. They didn't, I don't think they had a lot in stock. But at the time, I somehow I just I paid like 25 bucks or something or something like that. And, because they're real metal Dayton wear wheels and they're like 22 style inch wheels. And, um, you know, I, after a certain time of going to Pegasus, when I was building this Tahoe, same thing, it never hurts to ask. I, I took the body over there and I go, Hey David, uh, you know, I'm a little, I, I want to do a design on this, but, and I know I seen your work and you do a lot of cool hand, hand painted, you know, designs on, on car, like pinstriping and stuff. And he kind of looks at me and goes, well, I really don't do anything for people, you know, uh, for other people, you know, I mostly do my work and I was thinking, oh, my mind, oh man, he's not going to do it. And I go, well, I really don't need a lot of work. I just need, I just want some cool cursive, something around the fender, just something simple, you know, just to make it look just to pop a little bit. And I told him, and I, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know, 
how I got him to do it or what, but I may just because I asked or, and I also told him, I go, if someone, and I told him, this was the time where, when people are building stuff for people, like say I built, you needed my help in something and then you go to a show and then you're like, oh, I built a whole car and, you know, I didn't, uh, you didn't give the props to the guy who helped you with it. So I think David was like that. And I go, no, I go, I told him, I go, if someone asked me who did the paint striping, I'm going to tell them that you did it, you know? And then uh, I, after that, I kind of vaguely remembered, but yeah, he said, okay, cool. And he took it. And then like a week later, he hit me up and I brought it to me. And I was like, oh, this is per exactly what I wanted. And ever since, it's from the 90s to now, you saw it. I still have it. It looks brand new. And David, David Anthony Garcia has never seen, he's only saw, I guess when he did it, he's never seen it after the build was done, you know? And that that you know, and it's crazy because he actually saw it. And, yeah, yeah, it's uh that was that was uh like something that I got to witness. Um, you know, yeah. the the day of the show. So the dedicated magazine show, you brought your models. I I got to see the Tahoe. You showed me details. I took photos of it, which I've been holding on to. I've been waiting for this <laughs> moment to show them. I am gonna show uh, them for the listeners, so uh -oh. they can see what we we're talking about. Yes. And um, it, there was a moment, where, you know, we were hanging out throughout the whole the whole show, and oh yeah, remember, um, you know, he was there, and you know, mm -hmm. that year he wasn't doing well, he was ill, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, it was already like getting ready. We were getting ready to leave. You know, it's like the end of the show. You had already put your stuff away. I was putting my, my stuff away as well, and then um, I mentioned to you, hey, he's actually here. And, and I, cause even I was surprised that he was there. I wasn't sure I had heard he was going to be there, but I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, when we saw him, you know, he was, he was in a wheelchair. So I was, you know, I was kind of like mm -hmm. shocked, like, oh man, like last time I saw him, he, you know, he wasn't in a wheelchair, anything like that. So I was like, man, th this is like something serious. So yeah. then, um, you know, you were like, Hey, you know what? You think I should go get my car and show him like, yeah, do it. And then, yeah, yeah. you know, you went and you got it, came back. And then I wanted to witness this, you know, and then, you know, we went over there to say what's up to him and you showed it to him and then you started talking to him. And, um, and I remember like taking some photos and, and some video clips of that too. And it was oh, just cool. <laughs> really cool to see, um, you tell him like, Hey, you, you did this, you know, back in the day and then him to see it and just to like trip out on it, that you still had it. And he, yeah. and like, he remembered, he was like, Oh damn. You know, it was just, it was a very, yeah. like, uh, like a cool moment right there. Yeah, you know, I, I I saw I didn't like you said, you know, I didn't know he was there, and I saw him in the in the wheelchair. I didn't I didn't know it was him. I just thought was a, a, he had his hat so low, I really couldn't see his face. So he was like low key in a wheelchair, you know, you know, which you know it, it just surprised that I didn't know he was there. And then at the end of the show, like you said, you know, I was, I was like, that is okay. That's the you know, and I told you I'm gonna I'm just gonna show it to him, man. And I don't you know I, I just had to do it, man. It was it was. Was in the mo it was one of those moments where I had to do it because if I don't do it, I'm gonna go drive home and feel like, dang, I should have showed him, you know, that that I should have showed it to him. It was sitting right there, you know. And uh the cool thing was when I gave it, showed it to him, he actually recognized, oh hey, what's up, man? Like he kind of he knew it was me. He was like, Hey, what's up, dude? Yeah, I remember, I remember uh I remember doing this. <laughs> and it, and that really got me like like really pumped up, man. I was like, wow, he actually remembers and remembers me you know so it was really cool to, to know and even and you know it was just a cool moment man and i'm glad there was people there to witness it you were there to witness that and you know it, it was just really super cool because i didn't see you know i didn't see nobody else coming up going hey he's a model that you did back in the 90s you know like in you know i just had to do that man i just had to show it to him kind of because i knew it was in the, you know he was he was he looked like he was down and hurt and I just wanted to cheer him up, man. You know, that's that's why I went over there and showed him the model, and I saw his eyes light up. He was like, ah, "I remember this." <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, he so, did. Yeah, you know, even Anthony, even uh, even Flores, you know, he was like, "You still have these?" Like he even he told me when I set him up on the table, he was out. like, "Yeah." He was like, "He goes, I never seen that six seven. He goes, I I never seen the six that sixty two. I go, those were like." my last builds that I did before I, I never, before the contests and all that started just to kind of disappear, you know? So he's like, man, that 67 is clean. And I'm there. I'm like, thanks, bro. I'm like, thank you. You know, just one of my last goes, and then he goes at the 62, like 
looks like from the movie uh, Boys in the Hood or something like that. I go, no, that's not it. it it's just something I did, and that kind of looks like it. But he goes, yeah, that's a nice one, too. He goes, man, he goes, he goes, your work has always been – he goes, I always liked your work, you know. And I'm like, oh, dude, for coming from you, thanks, man, you know. And he showed me his, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can't – yeah, that's – yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just one of those things to see all these – it was just really cool. I'm glad I was able to go. Yeah, and just see all the old school guys, and there was guys that I didn't even like. I didn't even recognize that when I was walking around. They're like, hey, uh, Mark, right? You're Mark. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, what I do? And they go, no, no, no. I remember <laughs> you from. I remember you from man from back in the days, bro. Wait, how did you get? Uh, how did you find out about this? And I'm like, oh, that you're from uh, Scale Riders, you know? He's like, oh, all right, all right. And they're like, you're gonna come back and build more, and I'm like man, you guys are pumping me up to do some, maybe do something, man, you know, but I got into the Hot Wheels, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, it's a trip, like, when you think back, you know, you were doing the model cars, all the people that you had interactions with that you met, people that were involved in the hobby, even just people that you just saw walking around, you know, those hallways where everybody that was working on the, on the competitions and all that, to now, you know, you're you're in the world of the 164 scale, uh, customizing, and you're participating in a lot of these events as well. And um, and I mean, there's a lot of people that also come to you, you know, that they want to do like wheel swaps and all these various things. And and even now, like you know, like me looking into the 164 scale world, it's like blown up like crazy. Like it just looks. I don't know if it was always like that. But and I don't know if it's maybe because of the internet, but in social media, it's just I I see it like really big, and and it's really cool to see all the new things that are going on. And um, w when you got into uh, like the customizing, you know, especially with like the wheel swaps and and all that stuff. Um, at some point, when did you decide like you know what if you know if people want to get this done, like I'll I'll do this for them. Well, when I, you know, like when I first started, well, getting into the Hot Wheels, you know, because I, I, I was already, you know, pretty much done with the one, to, you know, the one, the bigger scale models. And uh, I was like, you know, I was, I was, I wasn't doing them for years. And then, you know, one day uh, I started, I bumped into this uh, Hot Wheel in the, in the store and it was a Honda, the EF, the little, the, the, like a little green one. And I, I just tripped out like, what the heck, Honda? They make Hot Wheels makes Honda, so I was like, got it. That just something in my brain just clicked, like boom. And I ended up buying them all at Big Lots at the time, bought them all. And you know, I got home and I was just sitting there fascinated, like they have Hondas, like what the heck. And so I started. I got on. I just got on uh, YouTube and typed in, you know, Hot Wheel collector bowls, Hot Wheel this, and I started getting a little information about Hot Wheels. I mean, I knew Hot Wheels were around for a long time, but I just didn't know you know, what was the concept of, you know, like, like the cars they made. So I started researching. I'm like, oh my God, I want all these. I just started get, catching the Hot Wheel buzz, man. I just started collecting at first. I was just collecting Hot Wheels like crazy. And then um, one day I saw this guy, uh, I used to have a, you know, I used to have a booth over in the city of Whittier selling Hot Wheels. I'm not going to mention names, but I, I had a booth there and you know, selling Hot Wheels, and before that, you know, I saw this guy, and uh, he had a Hot Wheel on YouTube that he sw he switched the wheels from a real riders onto a mainline, and he showed how you break them apart and put them on, and I really got like, whoa, I got hooked on that. So I started, you know, going to the store buying eight dollar hot uh, real rider cars and just swapping the wheels, and then I was just drilling the rivets off and just putting super glue back together. I didn't do the tapping, screwing, none of that yet. And uh, so that was my introduction into wheel swapping. And then obviously, you know, it just progressed to where I had a lot of Hot Wheels. I started having this booth over in Whittier. And I decided one day, I was like, I heard a guy walking around in there going, hey, anybody could swap wheels. And, and you know, I have a set of wheels. I need the, someone to swap the wheels. And I'm like, I'm looking down on my thing. I go, well, I have a drill here. And I, go, so I go, you know what? Hey, bring it over here. I'll swap it for you. So I drilled it out, you know, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't into the tapping and screwing thing yet. So I tapped it, I, I drilled it out and I put his wheels on it and I realized the axles were kind of sh 
too long. And I was sitting there going, how am I going to fix this problem? So I was like, okay. All right. So I knew what to do. I just basically sized it up, cut the axle. And then I super glued one tire onto the axle and then, you know, put the wheel. So everything spins. And that's, that was how I started back in the day was doing that. Um, Manny from play days uh, does that. I didn't know that until one day I found out he did it. So, you know, it, it's just, that was when it was customizing back then was not really accepted in the hobby world that much right there at that point, it was just wheel swap, you know, you swap your car and there you go. And then as the years go by, you know, uh, this was before I had the booth at uh, over in Whittier, um, I used to sell on a table with a buddy of mine. Well, not too much hot wheels, but my buddy, my buddy was the more one that did it the most. And, um, I was sitting there one day and I was walking around checking out stuff. And then I saw this, he's a model. He used to, he used to be a modeler back in the day too. His name was AJ. And, uh, he, uh, he, he used to build models, not as he didn't do competitions out that, that much, but he was a modeler that I ran into while, you know, he obviously moved away, uh, over, over toward like, uh, Irwindale. And, you know, I was in Southgate, so I didn't really talk to him for years. And I looked over and I saw him sitting there and I was like, Hey, what's up, dude? And he's like, Hey, you know, I haven't seen you in years. And I go, yeah, man, I'm just in the hot wheel game. He goes, really? Yeah, I've been in the hot wheel game for a cool minute. And I looked down and he had hot wheels that were customized. And I was like, Hey, I go, did you do these? He's like, yeah, I did these. And I go, man, they're really freaking awesome. Like they look like 124 scale, but in a hot wheel, they were slammed, cambered out wheels you know, detailed decals. And I'm like, dude, where did you get the decals? Where did you do it? He's like, oh, I make the decals. And I go, where'd you get the wheels? He goes, oh, I get those from other cars. I say, cool. And uh, that, from that day on, you know, AJ, his name's Angel. He, he uh, as, as a matter of fact, on his Instagram, I don't think he has it, but he goes under, um, uh, what is it? Like, I think it was a, a Hot Wheels Theory. Uh, he goes under Hot Wheel Theory. And, uh, yeah, he just he just got me hooked on the customizing. I was like, man. So one of my buddies was with me at the time when I was looking at these cars. And my friend, my buddy goes, he goes, hey, man, you could do that. And I'm like, you know, we were walking away. He goes, you could do that, dude. And I go, no, I can't, man. That's too small. That work is too small. I cannot do that. He goes, man, you used to do those big cars, man. Those things came out sweet. I go, yeah, but that's a whole different level. And then he goes, no, nah, man. He goes, these Hot Wheels is a different level. Look how small they are. And I go, I can't do that, bro. I'm done. I'm just, just go back and, you know, hang out. He goes, man, he goes, what are you, sissy or what? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that, that I said, okay, okay. You started a war now. So I just started doing customs. <laughs> so, you know, I just started my, you know, you got to crawl before you walk. And I did a couple of paint jobs and uh, like I said, I knew how to take them apart, but I wasn't at that level of, like tapping and screwing them. I was just gluing them together, and you know, so I, I I knew how to paint, and I knew how to airbrush, but I haven't done it in so long, you know. And I I did my first car. I think it was a two a 180 SX, and I was like, well, I'm gonna two tone it. So I did a blue with a black top, and I saw how my friend cambered the wheels, and I tried it on my own. Obviously, you fail a lot, and you mess up, and you damage stuff, and you know, I finally got it correct, I think. And I showed my buddy and I took it to a show and like uh, to the Whittier, just, I was selling Hot Wheels and I took it there just to display it. And my friend's like, oh, dude, you made one. I was like, yeah, you know, it, I thought it was easy, but it's kind of hard. He goes, yeah, you know, but it looks really good. Just take your time. And that's what got me to do wheel swaps at when I had the booth now. I was, you know, people were coming up to me. Like I said, this one guy was walking around. I swapped it for him. Next thing you know, I had more and more people coming over to me. Hey, can you wheel swap? Can you wheel swap? Can you wheel swap for me? That's how it started. That's how Dang, it started that's me dope. doing wheel swaps. Yeah. I never so. knew that. That's cool. That's yeah, good to know. Yeah. yeah Cause yeah. you know, um, I still remember bro. Like when I met you like the first mm. time and, and just going um, there uh, to South Pasadena to the park mm. and it was a trip because I mean, um, I met uh, Juan Amesco was the one who uh, introduced me to there at the park in person mm. you know and and i just still remember seeing the flyer for that event and and i remember um uh, i'm where i'm living at now you know i had just recently moved and i was like 
looking at the address and I'm like, wait a minute, this spot's like 10 minutes away from my house, 10, 15, you know, not, not too far at all. And, <laughs> um, and I remember, uh, DMing that, that, um, the flyer to Juan and being like, cause I know he was always going to the play days mm-hmm, and I'm mm-hmm. like, Hey, are you going to be going to this event? And he was like, oh, you know, I'm going to be busy that day. I don't think I can. So then, you know, something came up. I, I couldn't go either. So then finally we, you know, there was another date that came up for the event. And we're like, let's go to that one. Let's meet up. Let's go. So we uh, we ended up going. But at that time when I was going there, um, I already had seen, was starting to follow, um, you know, people that were doing customizing with um uh, the 164 scale. Mm-hmm. So when I saw that, it like, you know, it blew my mind. And I was just very curious, like, oh, I wonder how this event's going to be. You know, I, I was imagining for sure there has to be some customized stuff, maybe some accessories. I, I don't know. We'll see. So pulling up to that spot at that, that first time I went there, I mean, I couldn't even find parking. <laughs> a lot of people that were there. I mean, just I was blown away. Tents everywhere and everything. It was just like cracking, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and I remember you know doing the rounds and I was just going kind of crazy, just buying whatever like JDM Hot Wheel car that I could find that I would that I, that caught my eye. Mm-hmm. And um, and eventually you know when we when I walked over to your table. I saw what you were doing and like people were just waiting, you know, or just bringing you a car, like almost like an order, like, Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go with these wheels or here's a car. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was just a very interesting thing, like thing to see in person. But then, mm-hmm. you know, when I got to see like the final product, once it was done and, and you showed it and, you know, you even let me record you like a clip of you doing it. That was really mm-hmm. awesome of you to do that too. Um, you know, all that stuff, bro. I was like, man, this is so dope. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and I could see why, you know, it, people, you know, come to these events. Definitely. There's a lot of inspiration, you know, when, when they come out and they see all this stuff, but it's also like, everybody likes to hang out and talk about like cars and what's going to come out next and everything. Cause mm-hmm. I can hear it in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's those kind of, uh, you know, when I first, you know, I got out of that Whittier uh, spot and, you know, I just started venturing on my own and I told a lot of my guys, Hey, I'm going to not be in there no more. And, uh, you know, I, I got word about this show too, through some friends. And I was like, man, I'm going to go hit this up. And, you know, when I met you, you know, I've done prior shows, you know, before I met you and all, but it, it just started getting bigger and bigger. And then it, it, people, more people and, the event got better and it just got, I was, I was, I went to the first, I was there the first event they ever had. And it was, it was cool. There's not that many people, but it just started, just started booming. Like as a year, you know, pro, you know, the years progressed and, and, and as passed. And now it's like, you know, I saw you there and you saw the, you know, it's just getting big. It's like people, it's like, it's like the community of how wheels is crazy. It's like customizing now is more, is like way more acceptable because, you know, 2018 is when I, you know, I mean, 17, I, you know, seriously getting into customizing this was 2017 when I was like detailing it, you know, doing all that and then progressing, going to the Hubble conventions and, you know, I enter cars and, you know, I do it for fun, you know, and then I go to these shows and I, and I like, I like to show people how to wheel swap, how to do the tapping and drilling, how to do all this. And it just, it's just something I like to do because I want to keep, I don't know if I'm like an ambassador to it or whatever, but I know there's a lot of dope customizers in California, but I started knowing more that it was weird because a lot of the customizers that do hot wheels, thank you to AJ, Hot Wheels theory for getting me influenced uh, and, and bringing me into this. Uh, I just like to show and, and, and keep it progressing. I want the little kids. I want the beginner customizers not to be, feeling bad about what they do like they can't do it to get discouraged i like to sit there and show them how to do it that way when they go home and they can you know they ask me what tools like we get as long as you have these tools you're good to go and i just like to spread it out and just make the community of customizing i want to you know a lot better and bigger you know and 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 i just want to keep it going i don't want to do something you know like i don't want i i have a lot of guys that come up to me and go hey check out my custom i just did 
And I'm like, I look at it and I go, hey, bro, pretty cool, man. You know, I like to give that positive feedback because I don't want to give a kid, well, yeah, whatever, it's ugly, I don't like, because I don't want to crush, the, you know, I don't like that crushing someone's kid's dreams or anybody's dream and they don't want to do it no more. And there's one person that's not even doing, that's out of the customizing Hot Wheel game now because of one person gave them a bad, you know, like a disrespected their car. You know what I mean? And I love to share my information on how to paint, how to do decals, how to, they ask me all these questions at these shows and I'm, I don't care. I'll, I, I want, I even, I, I want it to spread. I want these kids to, to learn and to create. And it's just like, you know, express your, express your, 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 your style to, to the car. You know, everybody has a flow. And a lot of these, a lot of these kids I've known for three or four years that that's, I've seen around in the shows and, and other places, they're, they're painting pretty good, you know, and they're yeah. doing their own. They got their own name now. Like, you that's know, cool. like, uh, yeah, they got their own customizing name on Instagram page. And, you know, I got a lot of guys coming up to me going, bro, thank you. Thanks to you. You showed me, you know, you taught me how to paint. You taught me how to, this, you know, different people. They thank you for the paint job showing me. Thank you for inviting me to your house and showing me how to airbrush and, showing me how to do the tapping and, and now they're doing their own Instagram customs. And I feel like a mentor kind of in a way, but I don't take it that way. I just take it as someone just spreading the love in the Hot Wheel co customizing community. No, yeah. No, nah, yeah. I could see it, bro. I could see you yeah. are because, I mean, you know, you just showing, you know, how to do it is a big thing because, yeah. you know, I, I could see like, you know maybe in the back in the day someone being like i ain't gonna show anybody how to like how to drill and tap and do all this stuff because that that's like the mystery people want to mm -hmm. take their cars apart but they don't know how and then you know the next question is like well what tools do you use or how do you do it what are the steps and mm -hmm. i mean just seeing it how it's done it, it's pretty dope like i remember even leaving uh from that day of the park more motivated to want to try it myself and i mm -hmm. remember picking up um, one of the the tap and tool sets from Hayden from mm -hmm, HHW mm -hmm. Customs, and mm -hmm. it was a crazy because I met you, I met him, I also met um I can't remember his, his first name, but he does one sixty four uh, lifestyle. Oh Russ, yeah Russ, Russ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him too. You see, like Juan was just introducing me to a lot of the people he knows, you know. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it was cool to like you know put a face to everybody now. Um, that's doing this and um and you know I, I still remember like when i had recorded you doing it and then the, i put the video up on youtube on the scale writers channel mm -hmm. um you know like you know my kids asleep my girls asleep and i'm like all right i'm gonna go over here in the kitchen and make some noise you know i'm gonna drill this <laughs> these cars out you know all the whatever mm -hmm. hobbles I, I brought i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna i gotta learn i gotta learn yeah. so yeah. I was just drill, drilling out rivets, rivets, and all this stuff. And, yeah, there was some definitely butchered on bad. That, of course. But then it got to the point where I was kind of like, wait a minute. Fuck, what am I doing? And I went back, and I saw the video. And then I started following <laughs> along with the video. And I was like, all right, all right, I got it. So then I did get some where I was like, all right, cool. You know, maybe, the like, the last couple drills I was very happy with. Yeah. Um, but it, it was something, you know, learned, but it didn't discourage me. It motivated me. And when I saw the video, mm -hmm. it pushed me more. I was more like, all right, next time I go out there, I'm going to buy a bunch more, you know, just <laughs> hobble cars that I don't really care yeah. about. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to thrash them, I just want to learn uh, to, to get the feel for the drilling and the tapping and, and get that going, you know? And yeah, that's, that's the cool thing because, see, you saw that and it motivated you and, and, uh, and now you're doing... You're, now you're doing that, you know, now you're at that level where you can, you want to wheel swap something, you you know how to tap and drill, take it apart, boom, and all because of the video, bro, because you saw me live too, you know, it just, it's, it just gives that positive, like, I don't know, it's like an inspiration of like, 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 damn, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this now, you know, like, it's just <laughs> some kind of feeling that you just got to go and try it, man, and, it, nah, and then you get hooked, it it, does. you get hooked, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite, uh, it's quite tempting to see a Hot Wheel that has ugly wheels, and you're like, I have these wheels sitting here, look pretty good, <laughs> no, you know? Yeah, uh. and, and then um, and it's a trip because you know, I feel like there there's a lot of elements, you know, obviously mm -hmm. when, when building a car, there's mm -hmm. for sure, 
you know, you got to pick out like your favorite car. Which one's the one you like? You get that. And then when you want to customize, all right, what kind of paint do I want to go with? What kind of decals I want to put on this? What kind of wheels? So there's all yeah. the all this excitement, right, that's going on. And I just remember, you know, when I was walking around, I was like, all right, cool. I, I bought cars and, and this and that, but I want to get some other stuff. And then I remember uh, for the first time um, I went to his booth and I met him, uh, the Will Hustle. The, the oh, dude, Will Hustle, yeah. The dude from yeah. San Chris. Diego, right? Yeah, that's Chris Yeah, at and the I, Will Hustle. And I mm-hmm. picked up picked up some wheels i picked up some decals because i was just like all right water slides i'll pick some of those up you know i didn't really see other people and then later i saw oh hayden has some so then you know now like i've gotten some from him and um and also some wheels and you know and i remember in your booth too you had some wheels too the is it the carlomo yeah i was one of those that featured the uh, carlomo wheel uh the ball bearing wheel that you just spins forever so i yeah. gave you those and it, man they were freaking crazy yeah and I, re- I remember like getting some right from you mm-hmm. and then um I, I still have them and and i was just tripping on them that i was like you could just spin them and then i started seeing more videos on that on instagram mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. spinning the wheels and i was just like man w- where are those wheels made like are, are they from like hong kong or, or korea uh, i think they're made out in malaysia oh, somewhere okay. out yeah they're made out in malaysia uh, overseas they're nice they're, they're yeah, really cool whatever. And, and you uh when, when you're at these events will you offer them i mean they're they're available for purchase for people that yeah, want to come out yeah they're available for purchase um you know i do have uh you know you could either go to my instagram which is mark v h w homie uh, at Instagram, uh, you can DM me and, you know, I give you the price and you can, I can send them out to you wherever you want. Uh, you know, you can purchase them or you can pick them up at the show. Uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, if you can, you can pick them up from me anywhere, any, you know, anything, come to my house if you want, <laughs> you know, if you live locally in Torrance area or around LA and you're pretty close, you can come pick some up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's really cool. Uh, to uh to to just carry wheels carry 3d printed parts now it's like everything everything went from like when, as soon as the 3d printers came out and people could print decals the, the customizing just went up the roof mm-hmm. you know it, it just went because now you can 3d print motorcycles kitty cats dogs whatever you want dioramas are booming right now you know everybody's building dioramas now yeah you know dude. it's it's like you can go to this. You can go to the this. You know the, the Hot Wheel collectors. Uh, uh, um, uh, sh- you know, uh, just the show, uh, and you can go there and you could pick up a diorama set. You know that's been from Japan, a kit from Japan, or you can. Some guy has it made out of three D print, and you can just put it together. And now you have a, you paint it, do what you want to do. And now you have a garage, and you put your yeah. cars or low riders. Mm-hmm. It's freaking crazy. You can get little people. You know. Uh, workbenches, wrenches, drills—you can get all that 3D printed, and you can make a s- sick diorama or a little display or whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. It's it's freaking crazy. But when these Carloma wheels came out, I think it just pushed the boundaries of wheels because now they're bearings, they spin, and, and it's like what? Like you know, now you you go to the wheel hustle and you buy. You know, obviously these guys all have some dope wheels. You know, you know, you know, everything is. You know, I see I see everything for customizers, from like the beginner to the ex to the more experienced customizer. There's a product for everybody now, which is awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like like for instance, the last show at the of Royal Park, um, I had a kid come to me. He was probably about eight years old, and he comes up to me. And I've seen him before. He comes to a couple of shows, but he actually came this time with a car, and he's like. He's like, oh, look what me and my dad did. And he shows me this little GTR, or Nissan GTR he did. Him and his dad together opened it up and put a wheel swap on it. You know what I mean? And it's cool to see the dad and the son work together to create this wheel swap and to make him happy. Like, he's like, oh, yeah. And I said, you know what? You keep doing that, man, because I want to see you in the near future drilling and tapping your own stuff and creating a little customizer. You know what I mean? It's, like, really cool to see that. It just, It just – from the beginner to the pros. Yeah, I even have teenagers that buy the Carloma wheels and they're like kind of leery, like, man, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should buy, buy, I bought these, but 
And I go, look, I'm going to do a swap right now with these Carlomos. You want to get time? Sit here and learn, and I'll show you how to do it. And they're like, really? You're going to show me how? I go, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to sell you the wheels and you go figure it out. I'm going to sit here and show you. Next thing you know, I show them. They come back to the next show. They show me the car, and they go, yeah, I followed what you did. Look, perfect. I go, see? Are you scared to do them now? They're like, no, I need like three more sets. <laughs> Oh, so they, they 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 need now now they 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 see it and they do it now they want to do it yeah you know and uh it's pretty cool man like i see a system or like it's like a levels every every it, i see it as a level because i've been doing this for a while now so i kind of kind of boiled it down to like a little science of like how you become a customizer so you know guys and girls boys everybody so you become a collector in hot wheels you start collecting hot wheels and then you have you know your garage or your room full of hot wheels then after collecting hot wheels now you want to do wheel swaps so you start getting in the game of wheel swapping so you want to keep the og looking car but with a wheel swap okay you do that for a cool minute and then all of a sudden you're like hmm now that i know how to take the cars apart and do this i want to paint so now you become a painter. Now your level just went up, you know? So now you're painting, you're doing this, and you're, you're, you're progressing, and you're making, like, now you're doing two-tone paints, and, you know, you're learning, and you, you get this info. And then next thing you know, you're, you're, you're doing full-on detail work, decals, lighting, you know, detail, painting the wheels, painting the interiors. And then now you're pretty much a full-fledged customizer now. But you, you see what I'm you see where I'm kind of mm -hmm. getting to where it, it kind of it progresses. It does. And that's a cool that was a cool breakdown right there. I was like visually like picturing everything you were saying. Because you've done the breakdown of taking a car apart and swapping. And I know probably you, you know, thinking, man, I want to paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, oh, it's yeah. Like, it, yeah, it, it, it's like a seriously step by step by step by step. And I've seen it a hundred times already where guys are like, oh, no, I just collect. I just collect. I bring the wheels to you just to do them for me at the show. And then they come back, hey, look what I did, man. I, I, I bought the kit, and now I'm, I'm painting the cars now. And I'm like, see, you're learning. You're, I'm, I'm, you know, you're, 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 you're going to the next level now. And then he goes, yeah, I don't really collect Hot Wheels that much no more. I, I'd sit home, and I take wheels apart, and I swap them, and I paint them now, and I deal with lights. And then they ask me how I do the lighting. And I'm like, well. Most of them are a lot of decals. Some are hand painted, but hand painting it it brings me back to the days when I did the 124 scale. And they're like, "Oh, I remember you used to do that." So they go, "You have that skill already." I go, "You know, I did, but it's I had to crawl before I had to walk again, and I had to learn how to do all that. I had to relearn myself how to do that all over again at a smaller scale. You know what I mean? You guys are learning at a smaller scale, and you're going to have more the skill set." probably advance more than me if i showed you how to paint a light you know so and they they're like yeah you know, they kind of think about it and then they're, they're like yeah you know you're true you do have a breakdown on how this thing goes and i go yeah i go you know that it's it uh, i love it just keep doing it i don't care you know if you get better than me i don't care it's just all fun and games for me it's a it's a fun it's a hobby it's a fun hobby and you meet cool people and it's it's just awesome man i love it no it is and it's a trip because even from, you know, that world of Hot Wheel collecting and the customizing, I was not aware that there was, like, I, I know there was other brands, but I didn't really know too much about other particular brands. Let's say, like, Tarmac mm -hmm. Works that's out mm -hmm. there, the Inno, you know, 64 and all these other stuff that, you know, costs, it, it's more of a little bit more of a premium and and then there's still different levels to that with like mini mm -hmm. GT there and ignition model all this stuff. It was like a whole new world to me. So when oh, I yeah. when I um I remember um I was looking at Hayden's Instagram and he had posted a photo that he had you know bought like a Tarmax work like a Porsche, and I was like, man, that thing looks so dope. So then I started <laughs> asking him, where'd you get that? And he was just like, oh, one of one of my friends was selling it, you know, at the in one of his booths. So then I, you know, next time I went out there, now I was like, I had my eyes set on like, like somebody who was selling Tarmac Works product. Yep. Because I wanted yep. it in that little case, you know? Yep. So oh, then yeah. I found someone, I, you know, I think it was like 20 bucks and I was like, I want it. So I bought it. 
<laughs> and, you know, next thing nice. on, I'm over here on eBay or I'm just looking at websites. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I just opened up Pandora's box now, you know? Yep. I was like, yep. damn. So I, I just started, you know, picking out, ordering whatever cars that I can get. And now I have, like, a little stash, like a little collection that I look at. Mm-hmm. And then um, when I started getting the the, the GTRs by Mini GT, um, what turned me on was the Liberty Walk cars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was nice. like, oh, man. So then I told one of my friends, right? He He used to collect. 164 skill cars uh because he used to show me photos of some of the cars he had and he kind of took a break from it because he, he's a model builder and um and then i started to show him like hey check this out and i started to show him you know all the all those 164 skill cars i was buying mm-hmm. so then and he's he's a fan he loves gtrs so it start, as soon as he started to see those he was like oh crap like i'm like what he's like man now you got me looking yeah, so you just he, passed. Dude. You just passed that. You just passed that uh, influence over to him. Now he, you create. I call it creating a monster. Yeah, bro. He's gonna go crazy and start buying all crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. he he has because yeah. it's like a little fire because he he's been like buying them and he he'll surprise me. He'll show me photos like, yo, check it out, <laughs> and it's yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, and yeah. then randomly, like one day he texts me randomly. He's all. He's like, man, I'm going to have to punch you in the head next time I see you. I'm like, why? <laughs> He's like, bro, I'm like addicted to these things now. Yep, and, it's addicting. And he lives he lives in the East Coast area, right? Mm-hmm. Like Florida area. And he's like, yo, check it out. I just, I had no idea, but there's a Hot Wheels event this weekend. I'm going to go check it out. And <laughs> later he goes to that and he's like sending me photos, pictures. And it's reminding me of like what I'm witnessing over here on our end. Right. Yeah. So yeah. then oh, yeah. he's like, yo, I've been, I, I met some people, you know, they, they were telling me there's another event coming up and this and mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, there you go. You know, yeah. It, it's just, it, there's a lot of people that are into it in different regions and it's just, it's booming like crazy. Yeah. It's been for the last, I, I would say, even during the COVID pandemic thing going on, 2020, you know, 2019, all that, it, it's still, it, Hot Wheels is never going to stop. I see a lot of, you know, everybody had downtime. They went out hunting for Hot Wheels. Everybody, you know, just started getting their collections bigger, going to shows and doing all this, you know, obviously that lockdown, but, you know, still when they started opening up, everybody was just going crazy, going out getting Hot Wheels. I remember going to Target, and nothing. Everybody goes in the morning and scoops it all up, you know, but mm-hmm. it's an addicting, it's an, that's why Hot Wheels, like for me, if you came to my house, you would be like, my shop, you'd be like, whoa, I have a lot of Hot Wheels all over the walls, all over my shelves. I have boxes behind me full of Hot Wheels. And, you know, I even have my truck. I have bags of Hot Wheels that I haven't even brought into the garage yet that I just got. It's like an addicting thing. But a lot of them now, since I mostly customize, um, a lot of yes, I do sell at the show, but a lot of them I keep for me, for customers that want to order something and say, hey, you know, yeah, I have the car and I can do it for you. Instead of them giving it to me, I have it. You know what I mean? So I have that. Most of the stuff I buy now is pretty much stock for me to just to kind of have it, you know, which I never thought in my entire life that I would have Hot Wheels just to have them as collectibles slash, you know, for customers. I didn't think I was ever going to get to the level of having customers to do customs for, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's pretty cool, man. It's fun. It's addicting. It's fun. It's a, it's a fun, addictive hobby. You know what I mean? And then, like you said, you know, like me too, I didn't really know about Tarmac, about Auto World. Uh, you know, I, Johnny, Johnny Lightning, I knew for a long time, Matchbox. But I started learning about Tarmac work, uh, Mini GT and all this from, for customers bringing their cars to me and giving, me, and giving them to me to do wheel swaps. That's how I found out about it. I'm like, oh, what? This car is wow and you how much did you pay for this they're like oh i got it for like 30 bucks i'm like and you want me to take it all apart put these wheels and they're like yeah i don't like these wheels on here and i'm like i got these from the wheelhouse they got some wheels from the wheelhouse or some 3d printed ones you know like some nice 3d oh i want these on i'm like wow this is a whole new level so i had to learn how to take it apart i had to learn how to do the wheels i had to you know do all that and now that's how i found out about these brands you know and i'm like i'm like wow this is 
you know, I know there's Hot Wheels and I know there's Matchbox, Johnny Lightning, but these other brands are starting to catch the buzz too and making these cars look a little nicer and Liberty Walk and, you know, RWB. I was like, what? Like all this stuff was just boom. And I found out, like I said, I found out from people coming up to me and going, hey, can you wheel swap this? And I'm like, where'd you get this? You know, so now I know about it. But before then I was still new to it. And I was like, wow, this is a sweet little mini GT. You know what I mean? So these other companies and brands are just popping out of nowhere, making some pretty cool stuff, you know? Yeah, no, they are. Mm-hmm. I, w- I was even uh, tripping out. I was looking on eBay and there was this ignition model, I believe it was a Skyline. And mm, yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was like made out. Of, it says it's made out of resin. Yeah, it's and, a resin. And yeah, I was resin. like, I was like resin. So then I had to look it up, like look up a video, and you know the guy was giving like a breakdown between the resin and the uh, you know just just metal die cast. And I guess he was saying the the resin when I guess when they pop it or you know they could add more detail to something like that. But, yeah, because they they're molded. Yeah. So the molds when they mold them, you know, it it comes out more detailed than a molded metal oh. body. So it yeah. has more wide body. You could put the wide body on. It looks more detailed. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Cool. That. That was tripping me out. I was like, oh wow, I didn't know they were doing resin that small. You know, on a for for one sixty four scale, um, car. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the times that I've gone, you know, I I have, you know, I overhear people l- looking for certain cars, and there's kind of like a, a buzz, like when there, whenever there's like a new drop that comes out, and I like that people on Instagram, you know, share, even just companies that are selling the stuff are, uh, are sharing, you know, like what's coming, like pre-order, you know, what's, oh, yeah. what's the latest stuff? Because it builds up, like a, it gets attention, but it also builds up hype for oh, it. Oh yeah. You Big know? time. Because then everybody starts talking about it at the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't wait for that new series to come out, man. I'm going to get it. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. You know? It, yeah. It's how will shows are awesome because it's sales, and it's gossip and it's just who 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 does what who does this and what's coming out it's like it's like a it's like an information center and then when you go home you're like man i didn't know this was coming out you look it up and there it is mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean and you're like oh man i can't now now i'm gonna have to spend the money to get this set or this car which yeah. is awesome looking yeah i want it you know so yeah that's how that's why i love these shows and i love get get together like this because you know you learn a lot of information. You learn a lot of new things. You know, everybody has something new to say. That's, that's, that's what I, that's how I see it. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in LA, if you're in Florida, Mexico, you know, they're booming Hot Wheels too. Uh, uh, yeah, I've seen some videos Texas, in, Me- Dallas. in Mexico. Yes. In Mexico. They're, 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 they got, there's guys are breaking out. There's their old Mexican, you know, Mexico carded, Hot Wheels and, you know, cars yeah. I've never seen before. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, like, it, it's crazy. Like, yeah, they have their, that's they, so yeah. cool. Yeah. Then I started learning, like, Hot Wheels, like, out here, we have what we have mm-hmm. in, in models. And then when you, like, say Australia, they have different card printed. They have a different, they have different cars. Mm-hmm. And just like in Mexico, they have different cars. The cards are different. Like, it's just crazy. Like you learn all this information about other things that you never knew existed. And then you're like, Whoa, it's, seriously, this exists. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I wish I had that card, but I can't, I'm not going to Australia. You yeah, know, like it, it, it's what's a trip is uh, like right now. It's like the whole world is watching, mm, you know, yeah. like, you know, just think of, you know, you have your Instagram page, you have people that follow you, but then there's also, it reaches also people that are just discovering you, you know? And yeah. when you start, I feel like now when you do a post, it it, it makes a, a big impact compared to maybe back then because more people, there's more eyeballs now, more people are looking. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's sometimes they, you know, don't pay attention to the likes. It's more people are viewing it because... It, it it's one of those things, bro. Like, I, I feel like, you know, you could do a post about, you know, new wheel swap or a tip on how to do this, and it's like, it's not just gonna be viewed by people in the U.S. It's gonna be, you know, viewed by people in Europe, you know, Mexico, you know, 
Oh yeah, like it, Asia, different yeah. different places, different regions. Mm-hmm. It's gonna definitely reach, and you know, little by little, these people become fans, or you're the to go to for information as well, even though they have not even met you in person. But True. but they're out there, you know, they're seeking. It's like us too, like you know, we follow other artists and we're looking at things that they're posting, and sometimes you know they post something that. We're like, whoa. Like, I feel like every day there's some, somebody posts somewhere in some avenue, something that just blows your mind, you know? Oh, of course. Like, like for instance, a guy out in, uh, I think he's out in Malaysia, he does, uh, 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 he gets a Hot Wheel body and he hand carves the designs with a Dremel. Like, he, he, he carves out the bodies and makes, like, sick designs on it. Like, it's carved, you know? Yeah. Like, like these artists are starting to just progress, like, just elevate their their work this work and some of these guys probably never even touched a hot wheel they're probably just doing engraving belt buckles and stuff one day and so they saw a video of a hot wheel getting painted and they're, they're probably like you know what i'm gonna engrave one and next thing you know they're doing engraving mm-hmm. it's it's crazy like how they those low riders like real low riders they have all their bumpers engraved all the wheels engraved all everything's engraved these <laughs> yeah. guys are now doing hot wheel bodies you know what I mean? They're putting their artwork onto little 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 works of art now. Wow. I'm like, wow, that is that is super cool. I'm mm-hmm. not an artist, like I can't draw. I I can draw a stick figure. That's it. I, I can't <laughs> yeah. I can't draw, you know, like like these guys are doing murals and sweet murals on the side of their hot wheels and man, that is awesome. You know, I'm just glad I'm just glad to be part of, you know, this customizing game and just seeing it progress to other new 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 uh talent and just new people in general just tr- just learning and just wanting to absorb this information and you know and also too doing wheel swaps and you know i'm pretty sure you you've you encountered this as well but learning how to tap a drill a lot of people see it as it's really easy to do it's not it's it takes patience <laughs> yeah. so it, patience is a key when it comes to customizing these little cars because you don't want to, you know, I have, I have a lot of patience for this game, you know, to do this. That's why I love doing the, the detail work for me. I love the detail. You see my, my one twenty four scales. I mean, I love the detail. It takes time, you know, and I tell, I try to explain to a lot of people, customers in general that want to get something done. You know, I have, you, it, they think that you can do it like in a couple of days. I'm like, no, it takes a while, maybe a month. It takes a little longer because it takes that time to get if you, you to get that vision right. What you told me that you want to do, I have to make some of these pieces. Pretty much, you have to make some of these pieces and do things to make it look like how you want. So it's going to take time. So I always tell the guys that want to customize, you got if you have patience, you're you're good. But if you don't have patience and you get frustrated quick, you're not gonna. It's not gonna. Might not pan out for you. That you have to be a very patient guy to do, you know, to get to a level. Because I get guys that always tell me I show my work and they're like, Oh, did you do these sparkly work? I said, Yeah, it takes time, it takes patience. Yes, I fail, but you can't do it right away. You have to take your time. And they're like, Man, I can't get to that level. And I'm like, Yeah, you can. And now a year later, which is 2020, you know, 2021, it just passed. These guys are showing me their cars and I look what I did. And they're doing spark plug wires on the engines now what they told about months back they, they couldn't do it yeah that's dope <laughs> yeah it, it's yeah. a trip like i feel like all right right now it's like if there's something you want to do go for it and do it like don't like it's almost like what are you waiting for you know mm-hmm. like you have that opportunity to buy the tools to get the knowledge you know to get the car the wheels whatever you want to do just go for it it's like you gotta, you just gotta do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. You do need the patience because I mean, I I butchered some of the cars, you know. And even then, I remember like, so I dr- drilled out the rivets, and then you know, when when I was doing the the tapping before I did the tap, you know, you, you're you're drilling like the center hole. Mhm, mhm. You gotta do the center and, hole first. And then yeah, so the center hole. Drill the rivets, and then you know when you do the tapping. I remember like just being excited, like oh, you know, I got it to this point now. I'm gonna tap yeah. it, and then 
I, it's almost like I over tapped it or something, and then the thing kind of snapped, and I was oh, like, the tap broke, yeah, yeah. yeah I, was, you, I was like, yeah. ooh, okay. So then yeah. I was like, all right, don't trip. So then I, I was like, <laughs> move on to move on to the next. Yeah, yep. and then you know, I started to learn like, all right, and started you know, you start to kind of like see how many times you can turn this thing mm-hmm. before you get it to that point where you're actually gonna break it again. Or you just tap until you get where it does not tap anymore, where it does not turn. That's where you stop. Some guys go a little bit beyond that and they break the tap. So when I do, like, for instance, you know, if I was showing somebody, I would always tell them, you know, you drill as far as you can get and then you tap it when you can't tap and you can't turn it no more. This is this is what's cool when I do it in person. I have the tap stuck into the stud and I stop it and I give it to them and I go watch very gently turn it. They're like, oh, I can't. I go, you're at the very, you're, you're at the bottom end already. And they're like, ah, now I got that feeling because there's like, you could feel it. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, but here's another thing. When you become, when you start doing this with tapping and buying the tools, you know, a lot of guys get a little frustrated because they break them, but you're going to, and I even tell them, I go, I go, you're going to break tools. You're going to break taps. You're going to break a drill. You know, it's going to happen because you're learning. But after you get to that, over that learning curve, your tap will last you six months, five months, four months. Your, everything is going to start lasting longer now. So you you got to get over that hump. And they stick with it. And, I'm, you know, like you, you're doing it. You, you, you damage some cars and here and there, but you're learning. And now I'm pretty sure you, now you got the, uh, how do you say, the sense of to do it now. You, you got the knowledge. You're like, you know, okay, I know when to stop. I know when to do this. And. And it improves. And then when you get to that part where you can put the little screws in and complete your job, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah. Like, you feel good. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know you got that feeling. You're like, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. it's a, I want to. Yeah. It's satisfying seeing that, mm-hmm. like, the, the, the just the hole on when you create the, the new tap for the new screw to go in, that it's just like it's there. You're like, oh, dope. You know, and then you screw yeah. it in and you're like, like. You know, you feel like you accomplished something right there. Like exactly. And now you're like, all right, I gotta be patient because I want all my cars to be like this. But you know, once in a while, there's gonna be one that I'm definitely yeah. gonna mess up. But it's it's all good. You know, you just gotta you gotta keep going. And w- one thing that uh, got me excited too was even the uh, like the tools and the uh, in the like the the screws that you use. That I mm-hmm. had, I even picked some up off you, and I was like, "Yo, yep. this is this is cool, you know. This is yeah. this is something different." And that was one thing, you know, that I, I I also appreciated from you that you have that I could tell. Like, all right, Mark's like hella serious about this because, you know, you're paying attention to the detail, you know, um, even down to the screws and even the the specialty tools for those screws. Yeah. And I try. Yeah, <laughs> I dude. Try. I mean, it, it's it's dope, man. I I definitely, you know, enjoy. It. Can you plug in the uh, the the place, like the address and the the dates coming up? Um, yeah. So, um, if you guys, if you guys, uh, all the listeners, you know, and there's gonna be a lot of listeners, but if you're in the uh, LA area, um, you can uh, go on the, on the Instagram uh, page. Is uh, it's uh, SoCal Hot Wheels Collectors. And uh, there's a show actually this Saturday. Um, it's at a Royal Seiko Park. Uh, address is 6742 Marmion Way, South Pasadena, California, 91030. I'll be there. And uh, obviously with all the other gentlemen that go there, all the other vendors, um, come on down, take a look at my booth. And if you need some wheel swaps or any kind of drills or taps and all screws and a lesson or you buy some stuff or wheels. I'll be glad to show you how to install them. And I'll be glad to show you how to use the tools too. First timers, please don't be scared. If you guys ever have any questions, just like me, always ask. You you never hurts to ask. So you ask me, I will gladly help you. Awesome. Awesome. And um, before we go, any shout outs that you want to give out? Yeah, obviously, I'd like to give a shout out to you for for uh, doing this, man. Oh, thank and, you, uh, thank you. Oh yeah, man. You know, and it's a pleasure to 
meet you and you saw my work and you see my customs. There's so much to talk about. We could do a five hour podcast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So I like to give out, you know, some shout outs to uh, pretty much where a lot of the guys that helped me with the tools and all the, all the pieces that I needed to put things together. The first one obviously is uh, uh, in, you can find these all, you can find all these guys uh, on Instagram, give them a big follow. Um, first one, I'd like to say a thanks to Nate's Industrial Tools, uh, also Torrance Electronics. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to Mike at 164 Custom Fabs, Russ at 164 Lifestyle, Hayden at HHW Customs, and uh, yeah, it's 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 awesome, man. These guys all, you know, help me out. I help them. Yeah, it's it's awesome. So. Yeah, Nate's Industrial Tools and Torrance, uh, those are the places where I grab my uh, accessories like cutters and, you know, pretty much that. Nate's Industrial Tools, screws, taps, all that stuff there too. And if you go in there and say, hey, you know, Mark sent me down here, they'll take care of you, man. The cool people over there. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank nice. you very much. No, thank you, bro. Thank you for taking the time. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you um, here on the podcast. Um and, you know, we'll definitely have to follow up with you in the future because, I mean, the Hot Wheel game is just going up, you know. It's it's going to be elevating and it's going to be exciting to hear, you know, all the stories and, and you know, where it's going to be at in the future. Um, oh, and, yeah. Uh, I'll definitely uh, look forward to uh, seeing you as well at one of these uh, future events as well. I have to come out. Nice. Yeah, you got to get down there, man. And uh, one more thing, if you don't mind. I could give a big out shout out to my nephew, Tony. And uh, when I had my booth at Jimmy's USA, I have to put it out there, but I'm not there no more. Uh, I just got to say, you know, he he had his little side sewn Hot Wheels and I showed him how to do Hot Wheels. And he was really excited when I showed him, you know, how to open them and do all that stuff. So I just want to give a big shout out and have him say thank you for uh, learning and, you know, my patience with him and starting a little customizer he hasn't done it since but he knows how to do it <laughs> yeah no that's cool man yeah that's what's up awesome. yeah yeah thank you man i really cool. appreciate it so much so well thank you mark um it was a pleasure you having you on uh thank you everybody for listening uh to the scale riders podcast this was episode 146 with mark vargas aka defiant customs on instagram at mark v underscore hw homie and also Make sure to visit our website, scaleriders.com, for paint, model car kits, accessories, uh, whatever model needs that you need, they'll be there. So thank you, man. Have a good night. Oh, thank you too, man. You have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.